Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is GPJ. You've read the title. Now I'll give you the too long didn't watch version. Acheron is a godsend, both for free to plays, old timers, newcomers, whales, dolphins, all level of investment. Now that we got that out of the way, I'll argue you that for me personally, Acheron is a must pull. Now, so many of you think, oh, I have another lightning DPS. I have Kafka, I have Jing Yuan. You have all this perspectives oh she works well with the nihility debuffers she doesn't work with harmony units now i'll get into the points but first off let me just say that hoyaverse never miss with their presentation their trailers the way that they show off the units it is top notch i'm talking about the links of right and may the teases between honkai impact third and honkai star rail you have immediately links to well with the Hersher of Thunder kind of thing, with presentation like that, surely the, she must be good, right? Well, I don't know about that, but I can tell for sure that she won't miss. Acheron is basically a new type of DPS that comes in the game. She's different from Blade, she's different from Jing Liu, she's different from Imbibitor Lune, in that she works best not with Harmony characters, but with Nihility characters. I'm talking Pela, Gwenaifen. Black Swan, maybe another unit in the future that focuses on debuffs. Sustainers that gives debuffs instead of support. So basically, she is the type of unit that works greatest with debuffers. Now, don't get me wrong, you can still put Harmony units in with her, but I can guarantee that she'll not perform as great when it comes to her performance. The one thing that they tease in the dev stream is the fact that her alt is other than the fact that it's the coolest alt in the game so far rivaling that of well her alt is on steroids times steroids it's aoe area of effect so it hits all enemies it ignores type weakness so she's lightning and even if you're dealing with enemies that are weak to fire only she can reduce their toughness which is amazing and also, she ignores a certain percentage of resistance to the enemy. Now, I would argue with the way that the devs worded how to use Acheron and with the upcoming simulated universe relic, the ones that are the ones that are half the black, not black, purple and red, they are going to make sure that you're building your Acheron properly with Nihility unit and a sustain that gives out debuffs. And she's basically just another wave of quality of life all around with her technique she can insta kill every single um trash mobs in the game making her farming runs a bit a lot easier and she can do that in simulated universe that is amazing with the way that they worded the building blocks of acheron's team i.e nihil units acheron and a sustain you can free up your built harmony units the Ron Mays, your Bronya, your Sparkle, into the other side of MOC or Pure Fiction and let her cook on the other side. That frees up so many team comps that utilizes so many characters that are people are not going to use because, you know, they've built their Harmony units, they've built their DPSs, they've built their sustains, so why matter? Of course, people will argue that, you know, I have Jing Yuan, I have Kafka, I have Jing Yuan for my hyper carries. I have Dami Mami Kafka for my dot teams. You can argue that. You can argue that Jing Yuan and Kafka and Akron are the same. But let's be real. They're not the same. They offer many new ways to build the team immediately. And she'll be consistent right off the bat. Especially Jing Yuan. Now, in comparison with Jing Yuan and Akron, people say that both of them have backloaded damage. That's not true. Jing Yuan has backloaded damage because the Lightning Lord is slow as shit. You can put debuffers on the other side with Acheron and you can immediately trigger it after you have the charge. It's not really backloaded if every single time you're gonna go, you have the Hillary units charging it up already. Of course, Doom posters, those the people that have seen the dreams and armchair theory crafters they're gonna argue that she'll be mid because of the harmony well i can tell you hypothetically she has a multiplier that is based off of how many nihility units that 
could multiply her damage two times, close to two times. Now you could argue that armchair theory crafters, they're doom posting her, saying, oh, she'll be mid because of no harmony, she'll be mid because of there, she'll, she'll have another team of investment to work into, it's not worth it. Well, that's sunk cost fallacy, all right? There are so many ways that you can build another unit or another team when the devs themselves gives you the option of, okay, here's this unit, she can work best with another type of unit, you can build her. But instead, you will argue that, oh, she will be mid because of no harmony. No, that's not the point. The point is, she will free up all of your other harmony units so you can stack it on the other side of the floor and let her sweep the other side. So that's another way that so you can clear the other side immediately. That's not bad. Now, of course, people are going to say also that, oh, with the way that they're marketing her, she's going to be a whale bait. That's for sure. Hypothetically speaking, E0S1 Acheron is fine. Matter of fact, E0S0 Acheron can work best if you know what you're doing. Now, when I summon for Acheron, or when I try to summon for Acheron, because I'm free to play on my account, and I don't know if I can get both her both her and her signature weapon, I can def I will try to get, get her E2S1 in the future. Now, I can guarantee you that there are so many options outside of the E2S1 or the E0S1 area that she'll be consistent and she'll be solid. Will she need a bit of investment? Of course, every single unit does. Will she need quite a lot of investment horizontally, i.e. your other units? Yes and no. Let's take, for example, you can put her with Fire MC. Fire MC, she's a preservation unit. She has a taunt, which is a debuff, if you didn't know, that taunts the enemy to attack her. With her taunt, she decreased her damage taken by, I think it's around 50% at level 9. With Trend, with the Trend of Universal Market, like Comb, if you have 5 enemies that are on the field, you can potentially gain 1 from her taunt, and then 5 more from Trend of the Universal Market. That's 6 points from her immediately. Now, will she survive? I don't know. That's another thing. And of course, the upcoming 4-star selector, which you can choose ev almost every single 4-star unit. There's options there. There's Pella, there's Gwenaifen, there's... I think there's Sample. I, I don't think that there's Sample. Pella and Gwenaifen could be your best in slot for 4-stars. Because Pella has Defense Shred, she can use the Resolution Light Comb. And Gwenaifen has damage, increased damage taken from Fire Kiss. So that could work. Although, if you have an E6 Gwenaifen build, that could potentially be your best in slot with Acro. Now, for sustains, I saw, I've spoken about Fire MC. Now, let's talk about the upcoming guy, Gallagher. Gallagher, from the presentation, they showed us that he can give debuffs from his ult. He has 100% advance forward after his ult, and he has an enhanced basic attack that gives another diva. That's two. So you pair her, let's say hypothetically there's uh, Gallagher, Pela, Gwenaifen, and then Acheron. Two from Gallagher, three from Pela, that's five. And two more from Gwenaifen, that's seven. Acheron has one with her base kit, S1. Probably you could get one more so that it completes the stack, but I don't know. We'll see when she comes out. I'm going to be looking forward to her. I'm going to see what she can do. I'll try to pick her up E0, S0, and S1, if I'm lucky. And in the future, I will definitely try to get her Eidolon. Probably up to E2. If I'm lucky, E6. But who knows, right? Also, another point. When we're talking about the potentials of DPSs. We have Blade. We have Jing Liu. We have Dan Heng. And Bai Better Lune. We have seen what they can do almost to the limit with the rise of Ranya, Sparkle, Ran Mei, three harmonies, one DPS kind of thing. Archeron is only beginning. Why? Because I would argue that her best in slot teammates, the five star Nihili debuffers, basically a five star version of Pela, a five star version of Gwenai Fen, a five star version of uh, Gallagher, is in the horizon. And when they come, and when they completed her team, 
Acheron could deal outstanding amounts of damage with no harmony. Overall, that's it for me. I'm going to be trying to make another guide for Acheron in the future with easier S0, possibly easier S1. I'm going to try to build Gallagher also. That will be fun. And we'll see how it goes from there. So thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you all on the flip side. Take care.